Hello and welcome back to Introduction to C Programming. In our lesson 3 today, we are going to be looking at control structures. We have three types of control structures. One, we have sequential, selection or decision, iteration or looping. However, today we are going to be looking at sequential and selection. Under the selection, we are basically going to look at the decision structure only. The three types of control structures we've just mentioned, sequential, selection, and iteration. What is sequential structure? Sequential is execution of code statement one line after the other. While selection, we are basically choosing between two or more alternative paths. And lastly, iteration, we are repeating a piece of code multiple times in a row. It could be multiple pieces of code or statements if you like. Now let's look at the program we are seeing here. It depicts a program whose execution will be in a sequential order. If you look from the first statement, that is line number one all the way to line number two, they will all be executed one after the other. Remember from our previous classes, we said that execution begins from main. So under the body of the main function, we have declaration of A as a float and B as an integer. Then the program will proceed. The program execution will proceed to ask the user to enter a value for the float. The scanf will be executed. Then we move on to the next printf on line number eight, where the user again will be asked to enter the value for, the for an integer value. Then a scanf will be presented so that the user can be able to enter a value. And lastly, the program will be able to output a value of the float and output the value that is carried by A and value of the integer and output a value that is being held by B. Now the execution will be as shown by the, fol the following flow. You have statement one will be executed, followed by the second statement, and so on until the last statement is executed. That is how the flow of a program that is in sequential order is executed. Now, before we proceed, it is important for us to look at certain operators that we'll be using. Equal sign, we have greater than, we have less than, we have greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and then we have the and. Let's see how we will be able to use them under selection. Now, selection is also referred to as branching or the decision structure. Now, a realistic C program may require that a logical test be carried out at some point within the program. One of several actions will then be carried out depending on the output of the tests. Now, let's begin by looking at the if statement. It used to carry out a logical test, then takes a specific action, else we exit the F structure. That is, if the condition is not met. The else part is optional. The program we are looking at demonstrates the use of if statement. Let's look at the main function. We begin by declaring a variable int age. Now, on the next statement, there is a printf, and this will inform the user that it needs to enter the value for age through enter your age. On the next statement, we have a scanf that will accept user's input of integer value. Next, we have our test condition, and basically where we have the test condition, uh, we are evaluating whether age is greater than 39. That is, if age is 40 and above, then the program will output you qualify. However, there is no alternative for if age is less than 40. And therefore, if you enter a value that is less than 40, the program will not give any output. Now, the program flow is as shown here. As you can see, after the user makes his input, then we have the decision there that is being made. 
if age is greater than 39, if it evaluates to true, then we output, you qualify. And then the program terminates. However, if it evaluates false, that is, if it is not greater than uh, 39, then also the program terminates. Next, we look at if else statement. Uh, basically, it's used to carry out a logical test that takes one of two possible action. The other form of if statement that will include else statement. Now, it takes, up, it takes the form if expression, that is, if that expression evaluates to true, then we'll have a statement one executed else. If the first expression does not evaluate to true, then we have a statement under else being executed. Let's look at the code here can best be used to illustrate what we are saying. Now we begin again from main. We declare a variable integer, that is max. Uh, the program will output enter student max. Then we have a scanf that will accept user input that is of an integer value. That's why we have a percentage D there. Then we come to the evaluation where we are checking if max is greater or equal to 40. The same as saying, if max greater than 39, then if that statement evaluates to true, it will output pass. However, if you enter a value that is less than 40, it will still give an output, and the output will be you fail. Let's look at the other program, the previous program we just looked at. If we were to modify that program, the one for entering age, if we were to modify that program so that it can also evaluate for a condition where age is greater than 40 to give an output. Again, this program can be modified as such. If we evaluate age greater than 39, if it is true, then we have an output that says you qualify. Else, if it is not true, then again, we also have an output that says you do not qualify and the program terminates. So whether you end a value greater than 40 or less than 40, this program, because of the else statement that we are seeing there, it will be able to give an output. And the program flow is as shown here. If age greater than, supposed to be 39, if it evaluates true, then output you qualify. If it does not, then again, if it does not, if the condition is not true, then it will terminate because there is no output for it to give. The output will only occur if it evaluates to true. Now let's look at if else statement. Now think of this. If you have a program to write, that is write a program to allocate grades depending on the statement score in an exam. 70 and above, the grade is A. 60 to 69 grade is B, 50 to 59 grade is C, 40 to 49 grade is D, and below 40 then, that is F for fail. Now, the reason why we are now talking of if else if statement is because uh, the first if statement was to check for one condition. If else statement was to check for two different conditions. Now, if you have a situation whereby you have to check for different conditions, then that is the only re reason why we now need to use if-else statement. Now, the syntax is as shown here. If the first expression is true, then execute statement one. If uh, expression number two is true, execute statement number two, meaning that expression number one did not evaluate to true. If uh, expression number one, expression number two does not evaluate to true, then we check expression number three. If it evaluates to true, then we execute statement three and so on until we get else statement. The else should be checking for default. Any value that has not been catered for when you are checking from the expression one to the very last expression, then it should be handled here. Like example, if you end up max greater than 100, well, we know that 
for an examination, we are looking at a score of 0 to 100. So if you end a value that, out, that is outside 0 and 100, then we expect the else to be able to cater for that. It can probably give maybe uh, the input ended is invalid. Let's look at this program. Now the program here, again, we have modified our previous program, the one that would allow us to enter marks for students. And in uh, line number five, there is a scanf that will accept users input. Uh, we move on to line number six, we have a condition that is being tested there. If this max is greater than or equal to 70, then we say grade to be output is grade A. Now, watch line number nine. We're talking of else in line number nine, we are saying else if max greater than or equal to 60 and max less than or equal to 69. The grade to be output there is grade B. Now looking at that section, it is easier for one to be tempted to write max greater than equal to 70 and less than equal to 69. See, so you must Again, you must repeat the variable again and say max. Otherwise, you'll be wrong and the program will terminate because of such an error. Now, again, we have the same applies for uh, line number 12 where we are saying else if max greater than equal to 50 and max less than equal to 59, the grade is C. Line number 16, again, the same applies. Max greater than or equal to 40 and max less than or equal to 49. Now, remember we talked of greater than, uh, equal to, and so on. So we are saying, again, you can still write it as max greater than 39 and max less than 50. So line number 16 will be executed if the condition in line number 15 evaluates to true. Any other value that is not within the ranges of value given in different conditions that have already been tested will result to grade F. Now let's look at the program flow. Once marks have been entered, then the first condition will be checked. If it evaluates to true, then output will be grade A. If it evaluates to false, then we move on to the next condition, we check. If it evaluates to true, then output is grade B and we terminate. However, if it does not evaluate to true, then we test the next condition. Again, if it evaluates true, then output will be grade C and then we end the program. However, if it does not evaluate to true, then we proceed to the next condition and so on. Now let's look at the switch statement. Now the switch statement is another selection statement provided in C language. It causes a group of statement to be chosen from one of several groups. The selection is based on one of several values of an expression. If there is no match, then default block is executed. That is, if it is present. The switch is expressed as switch. We have expression and then we have the statement. One thing you must note here is that the expression should evaluate into an integer value. What are the rules of using switch statements? Number one, we have expression. That is after the switch keyword must yield an integer value, as you have said. Two, the case label values must be unique. Three, the case labels must end with a full column. Number four, the next line after the case statement can be any value in C programming. So the structure is as shown here, or the syntax. We have switch, expression, and then the case expression one. If case expression one is true, then we execute statement and then we break. However, if not true, we move on to the second case expression two. Statements will be executed if it is true and then we break and so on 
until a value is entered that does not lie within the cases that have already been provided. It is when the default statement will be executed and then we break to terminate the program. Now, think of it. If you are to write a program that prints the name of an integer number if its digits is in a range of one to two, if it is not, it returns an invalid input. Now let's look at this program given here. Uh, we begin with ash include line one, then we get to, into the main, uh, the main function in line number two. Under the main function, we declare an integer uh, variable number. We have a printf that says enter a digit one, two, or three. We have a scanf there that will accept user input of integer value. Then we begin the switch. Notice that inside the switch, the argument there is number for the value that the user will have entered. Then we begin the first case. Case one, that is, did the user enter value one? If the user entered value one, then the program outputs the digit is called one. The second case is case two. Did the user enter number two? Then it will output the digit is called two and it breaks. Case number three, did the user enter three? It will output the digit is called three and then it breaks. Now, if a user would enter a value that is not one, is not two or three, then the default statement will be executed and it says, invalid input. Let's look at the execution of the programs on our IDE. We begin the first sequential program. In summary, we have looked at three types of control structures. Sequential, selection or decision, iteration or looping. However, for today's lesson, we have concentrated on the first two sequentials and selection. Under selection, we have looked at if statement, if then else statement, if else, if statement, and lastly, the switch statement. In our next class, we'll continue with iteration or looping.